Hello, welcome back. As we said in the last video, in this here, we're going to go over an actual example of how to compute the valuation of an asset. So let's first take a look at some of the background information. Um, the company we're going to look at is Boeing. So let's say it sold a 767 aircraft to American Airlines. Um, and the term of the sales is that American Airlines is going to pay $10 million right away and then $10 million on um, as soon at the time of the, the acquisition and then $10 million every year at the end of each year for the next 20 years. Both of them will apply an 8% discount rate or 8% interest rate. So what we're going to do is we will we are asked to compute the present value um, from the perspective of Boeing. And, and this is the present value of the receivable. So again, this is a receivable that's not just one year. It lasts for um, 20 years. So this is a very, um, this is one of those unusual cases, but it demonstrates the point of why we need to apply fair value in this particular case. Uh, and then we're going to see how does this, the value of this receivable change over time. So first we look at the present value on January 1st, year one. So this is at the time of, um, of, of sales. And then we're going to look at what happened after one year. And then we're going to look at what happened after two years. So we're going to take a look at the change in the receivable value over time. I encourage you to pause the video now and write down the important information. So it's $10 million that will be paid um, on January 1st and then $10 million on December 31st for each of the next um, 20 years. So first of all, we have to take into account the time value of money. So for number one, the accounts receivable is not, so it's not $200 million. We have to take into account that there's an interest rate of 8%. So we have to compute the present value. And this may bring back uh, something that you learned from a uh, first finance course. Uh, we're gonna do a brief review. So the, um, the 10 million that they receive on January 1st is not an account receivable because they already pay it. So on January 1st, year one, you have 20 payments left of $10 million with the first payment occurring on December 31st. So since this is the same amount, 10 million year after year, and you occur at the end of each year for the next 20 years, um, the accounts receivable is actually an annuity. And we can use Excel for us to, to help us compute the present value. So we're going to switch over to Excel now. Okay, so you ha if you have not started Excel, I encourage you to start it now. Um, I have set up the structure of this problem. So once again, you may want to pause the video so that you can get the information and then follow along. The thing that we have to pay each year is $10 million. And the interest rate is 8% and you'll last for 20 years. So that is the accounts receivable and we know we need to compute the present value. So we're going to use the present value function in Excel. Uh, there are many ways you can start a function. You can click on the insert function and then look for the present value. Uh, after you have used this for a while, you may remember some of the more common functions. So if for present value, it actually is quite easy to remember. Uh, you always start a, a function in Excel with the equal sign and the present value, value function is just PV, so present value. Um, you also have to help in Excel to tell you what to input. The first argument is rate. So rate is interest rate of 8%. I use what I call the point and click method. So I like to uh, visually see what I'm putting into my formula. So the first argument is interest rate that's located in cell B4 in my, in my spreadsheet. And then, um, to enter the next term, I press comma. 
So now we see that it advance to the next term. N per is the number of period. So once again, those um, it takes practice, but you can get used to, to those terms. Um, so in our case, N per is 20 years. Once again, always use the cell reference. Moving on to the next term, you press comma. And that's PMT. PMT is payment. So our payment is $10 million per year. You have the option of entering a future value. We don't have a future value in this case. The future value will be if you have a balloon payment. And type here is you can select ordinary annuity or annuity due. In Excel, whenever an argument is in a bracket, that means they are optional. So we do not have those two. So we finish our formula and close it by closing the parentheses and press enter. You notice that it shows up as a negative number, and this is because of the assumption that is making Excel. Excel assumes that if you are making payment, then or receiving payment in this case, because the 10 million is positive, then you must be having an outflow in the beginning. This is a default assumption making Excel. Um, you can change that by putting a negative sign in front of it, and then it will show up as a positive number. So again, you need to know what uh, what the application you are using for. Nonetheless, the important thing is to get to the present value. So the present value of the accounts receivable in the beginning of year one is $98,181,474. So we finished the first part. So we, compute, we computed the present value of the receivable after you received the down payment. Uh, next, we are asked to compute the present value at the end of year one. So let's take a look at what is going on here. So the balance at the beginning of the year is what we have computed. So we can just reference the cell. So at the beginning of the year, both parties agree that the balance on the accounts receivable is $98,181,474. Um, and both parties also agree that the interest rate on this should be 8%. So what that means is American Airlines agree to pay interest rate of 8% on their accounts receivable. So the interest that Boeing will charge American, American Airlines is 8%. So again, that's in cell B4 times the balance. So let me do it one more time. When you're entering a, a, a formula in Excel, the easiest way is to start with the equal sign. And then you start with the, you click on the cell that contains the value that you want. So in this case, it's 8%. And you enter the operator, in this case, it's multiplication. So times um, the balance. Again, click on the cell that contains the balance. In this case, it's B8 in my worksheet. So that will be $98,181,474. So press Enter. That's your interest rate. And you may have a different uh, number of decimal places, and you can change that. Okay. Uh, here I want to say a note about rounding. Um, when you do calculation in Excel, if you do not put in rounding, Excel would not round your your um, calculations, and that may potentially cause differences between your calculation and um, someone who did the calculation by hand using a calculator. Um, so be be mindful of that. You could. Make sure that the rounding doesn't happen, uh, un unintentional rounding doesn't happen. So you can put, you can actually use the round function in Excel, and this will round a number to whatever digit you want it to. So for example, we're dealing with $78 million or $98 million. So rounding it to a dollar would make sense. Um, you can even run it to the thousands. So right now, run it to zero. Zero means to a dollar. I can run it to two decimal places. That will make it sense. Or I can even put in a negative number, so minus three. And that would run it to the thousands. Notice the difference when I use different kinds of rounding. And you can choose not to round at all, and that will be fine as well. 
So you can choose to round it to zero. Uh, the same for every single calculation. Okay. So that's your beginning balance. That's the interest that Delta will charge American Airlines. American Airlines promised to pay another $10 million. So the cash received is $10 million. And the balance at the end of year one will be the beginning balance. So again, use the equal sign to start your formula, beginning balance, plus interest, right? That's how much you owe, minus your payment, which is $10 million. So that is your balance for year two, for year, at the end of year one. To compute the balance for year two, you basically do the same thing. We have to compute the interest. So interest is still 8%. But now the balance you owe is only 96 million. So you put the interest 8% times $96 million, not the original balance of $98 million. So that becomes your interest. And once again, you're going to pay $10 million. So the cash received is $10 million. And the balance is, again, use the beginning balance. But now the beginning balance is beginning balance at the end of year, of year one, plus interest and minus payment. And that will give you the balance at the end of year two. Once again, you can format it to 2 decimal places, or you can format, format it to zero decimal places. Very important, a change in format is not the same as rounding. So let me show you this here. Remember we rounded this to zero? So if I change number of decimal places, you'll still be zero. But if I take off the rounding to two decimal places, now you have seven cents. So rounding and formatting are two different things. So be very careful what you are doing. So when if you are just formatting it to zero decimal places, Excel still will carry on the hidden decimals. Okay, so that's how you will compute um, the balance or the value for an accounts receivable that you need to apply fair value using present value um, applications. Okay, so to summarize, uh, accounts receivable, except look at uh, when we apply present value to the valuation of these accounts receivable, we recognize that the cash flow is an annuity, so we can use the present value function in Excel for us to compute um, the value at the beginning. So the present value is $98 million. And then each year, we'll take into account the interest that accumulates on this balance before we take into account the payment, um, and that will allow us to um, compute the ending balance. Another thing that you want to recognize is that this contract is very similar to an amortized loan. Uh, so uh, over the 20 years, uh, you have to uh, you will fully pay for the loan if you pay, make your payment of $10 million per year, assuming that the interest rate stays at 8%. And then finally, remember that formatting is not the same as rounding. All right, this concludes um, this video. In the next video, we're going to look at income and expense recognitions.